Hello, and I hope you are doing well. In this video, I'll talk about test connections, you know, dur uh, during performance of induced voltage tests on transformers. So the transformer would be connected just like it would be connected in service during the induced voltage test, except there is no load, obviously. The voltage or the test voltage would be applied to the low voltage side terminal. That's because obviously you have the high voltage side, the low voltage side, for instance, or primary secondary. You want to apply the lowest voltage because, because you, you know, higher voltage, you can have some issues. So to minimize the risk, you apply the voltage to the low voltage terminals and you still get the same results. Most manufacturers cannot apply the test to the low voltage terminals if they are more or greater than 35, 35 kV. So in that case, what they would do, some of them might add, so you will have, you know, like the high voltage windings, low voltage windings, they would add another winding just for testing purposes. And it will be permanent. That means uh, it's not going to be removed after test because they can't. Or other manufacturers might put a test tab, just a tab in the, uh, the low voltage windings. That way they can apply the voltage to induce test. And I'll talk about that more in the coming slides. So for instance, uh, you could have a connection that's a delta grounded Y. So like 34.5 kV delta and 12 kV is a, a grounded Y. Or 35.5 kV delta, the low side would be 480 volt grounded Y. Another connection could be a grounded Y, grounded Y. So 130 kV grounded Y and 13 kV grounded Y or 12.47 grounded Y. 208 volts grounded Y. Or you could have an auto transformer, 345 to 161 kV. Or you could have another, some manufacturers, but really few can apply the induced voltage test to the 161 kV side. Very, very limited worldwide. But if they have an auto transfer like 230, 130 kV, some might add a test tab to perform the induced voltage test in another auto transformer like 345 to 138. Others might put a test winding instead of test tab. Every manufacturer is familiar or comfortable with, they, or they have experience with one way or the other or both. So for instance, if we have a delta grounded Y, example 34.5 kV to 12 kV, and just a disclaimer, I'm not worried about vector group or polarity, so, so don't worry about that for this video. The, the intent is just to look at the test connection, how you would uh, perform the how you would connect these windings for the induced test. So for instance, this is H1 bushing, H2, H3. So this is a 34.5 kV delta. And you have, this is X1 bushing, X2, X3. This is a 12 kV in this example. And you have the neutral, you have connected to the XO bushing, then it's grounded. So how would you connect the terminals to perform the voltage test or induce voltage test? So basically you would connect all the terminals X1, X2, X3 to a three phase source, voltage source basically. Keep in mind, this is a three phase source. 
So you apply the voltage to the low voltage to the 12 kV, and uh, the other side, high voltage side, would remain. The terminals are open. You don't do anything to them. So that's how, in that connection, that's how you would connect the transformer for induced voltage test. So if you have a grounded Y delta, so for instance, so you have H1 pushing H2, H3, and you have HO, which is grounded. So this is, for instance, 138 kV. Then the low voltage is a delta. So you have X1, X2, X3, and this is a 69 kV winding. And trust me, all these connections exist. So the same thing, you would have a three phase uh, source. So for, you would take the terminals, this is our wires basically, and you would connect them to the terminals. Then you apply the voltage and you leave the high voltage side terminals open. So when you do that, basically you apply the voltage, you will excite the core and the rate of, oh, so that there will be flux flowing based on the voltage you apply and the frequency. And I would recommend watching the video that I made on induced voltage test and like why we increase the test frequency when we do this uh, test. So if we have a grounded Y, a grounded Y transformer, for instance, so you have the high side is a grounded Y. So like H1, H2, H3 bushing, and you have H1 bushing, which is grounded. Then you have the low voltage side. So you have X1 bushing, X2, X3. So it goes to X0. So this is, for, for instance, 138 kV to 13 kV. So the same thing, typically the induced voltage test is applied to the low voltage size because we want to minimize the risk, you know, by going to the side that has a lower voltage rather than Obviously, you can, there's nothing wrong with applying to the high voltage. It's just not, why not minimize the risk? So basically that's, so you have a three phase source. In other videos I'll talk about, so there is the induced voltage test. It depends if, if it's applied to power transformer class two based on IEEE designation, then you could do a one hour test with partial discharge measurement. And obviously before you do that, you set up the transformer for testing. Well, you do the calibration, you calibrate the PD or partial discharge, discharge equipment measurement, you know, then you apply the test and you measure the voltage current and also the Partial, partial discharge level. But this video, I'm just talking about test connections. So now, what if we have an auto transformer? And again, if you don't, if you are not, if you don't understand the transformer, I made some videos that kind of go through and explains what an auto transformer is, why we use auto transformers. So it's 
let's assume we have an example that's 345 to 161 KB auto transformer. So an auto transformer, basically it has two windings, high voltage and low, volt, low voltage. So the high voltage and low voltage sides are one, magnetically coupled and also electrically coupled. That means there's an electrical connection between the high and low sides. Typically, you see like, like in textbooks or you see like this symbol here for a, like a single phase transformer. So like this is the primary or high voltage, this is low voltage or secondary. And you see these lines are basically the core. So the windings are wound around the core for core form. Shell form is, a diff is, is different, but let's assume core form for simplicity. You see the high voltage, for instance, this goes to the source. Let's assume this goes to the load. If you have a pure two windings, you see the two windings are not connected electrically, they are separated electrically. They are only magnetically coupled because when you apply voltage, it will induce flux that will flow through the core and that flux will induce voltage through the low voltage winding. So really that's the only connection between the two windings, which is magnetic connection only. But at auto transformer, physically there is an, this is the series winding and it's electrically connected to what we call a common winding. So this is H1 terminal, X1. So you see H1, or so the high voltage has the series plus the common winding. And the low, uh, X1 terminal, which is the low voltage side, is only has a common winding, but they're electrically connected. So sorry, H2. X2, H3, X3. And obviously you have, so the neutral in this case is shared between the high and low. So we call it HO, XO, and it's grounded. So for those who can, so, the high side is 345 kV line to line. So basically from H1 to H2, it's 345. And low side is 138 kV. From X1 to X2, it's 138 kV. So you would apply three phase, basically you have a three phase source. So you would connect the low voltage, so X1, X2 and X3 terminals to the three phase source. So that's how you do the induced voltage test. This is just connection wise. Now let's assume we have an auto transformer, but however, we cannot apply the test at the low voltage side then we have to introduce a test tab so again auto transformer the there's a physical connection between the high voltage and low voltage so this is h1 terminal h2 h3 and somewhere here you will have a x1 based on ratio uh, turns ratio X3, sorry, X2 here. So in, in order to do this test, say like, so to do the induce, basically you would apply voltage to the 138 kV side. Well, most, like I said, most manufacturers cannot apply voltage to the 
like for this voltage, what they would do, they would like when they manufacture the transformer, they would bring a tap. So I'm going to call it T1, tap 1, or test 1 for testing, basically. So basically, a couple of turns to make the required voltage. T2 and T3. In this volt, so you have from H1 to H2, or H2 to H3, H3 to H1, the line to line voltage is 230, 230 kV. From X1 to X2, or X2 to X3, or X3 to X1, the voltage is 130 kV. From T1 to T2, the from tap 1 to tap 2, for instance, manufacturer will basically design it however they want based on the voltage they can apply. It could be 7 kV, it could be 10 kV, it could be 12 kV, but they will design it however they, to whatever voltage they can apply. So then, so instead of uh, connecting the three phase source to X1, X2, X3, like we did before, they would connect it to T1, T2, and T3. So that's how they would do the induced voltage test in this case with the test tab. Now, some manufacturers are comfortable, they have more experience with test tab, others have more experience with the test winding. So let's assume we have another auto transformer, 345 to 130 kV. Again, the same thing. So H1, H2, H3. So somewhere here there's X1, X2, bushing, X3. So what they would do instead of a test tab, they will design another winding, probably a delta. Could be a Y, it depends. Again, each manufacturer is comfortable with something. Some might might prefer a delta to avoid like uh, harmonics influence. Others might be fine with a with a, a Y because it's simple and reduced insulation so and so forth. So it's there are different philosophies. So I just called them, so since I have X1, H1, I call them Y1, Y2, Y3. Again, this auto transformer will, so the windings are permanent. This test winding will be permanent. It's, but its purpose is really only for testing. It's not gonna be connected, like when it's in, connect, when it's installed at a substation, it's not gonna be serving load or doing anything but it's important that it's designed properly for any voltage voltages that it might see in service, like switching, lightning, and so on and so forth. So again, but that's not the purpose of this video. The video is just to show the test connection. So three phase source, so you, you connect the terminals. And keep in mind these all these windings, you know, like this is the series winding, this is the common winding. So from H1 to H2, for instance, 
is 345 kV. From X1 to X2 is 138 kV. From Y1 to Y2, it's whatever, 12 kV for instance, whatever the, the, the manufacturer designs it to. So the series winding, common winding, and the test winding are all wound around the same core. That means they, they will see the kind of the same flux. So that, that's why when you apply the voltage to the test winding, that flux will link the common and the series winding. So that's kind of, that's how basically the test would be done under this condition. So that was it for this video. Hopefully you find it useful. Thank you and have a great day.